Our second review, we're going to go over greatest common factor, least common fault multiple, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing polynomials. So a quick review over greatest common factor. Um, remember step one is to tree it. So I'm not actually going to take the time to tree it because I can do these in my head and do it a little quicker. 10 broken down into its prime factors is 2 times 5. 18 is 2 times 9, which is 3 times 3. 24 is 2 times 12. 12 is 2 times 6. 6 is 2 times 3. So there they are broken into their prime factors. So step one is to tree it and then to list it. I did both of those. And now, because it's the greatest common factor, we need to find what matches or what they have in common. All three pieces, when I have three, have to have something in common. In this case, the only number that we have in common is a 2. So therefore, the greatest common factor of 10, 18, and 24 is 2. If this had a 3, let's just pretend this had a 3, then I would circle the 3 and I would multiply 2 times 3 and get the answer, okay? So, tree it, list it, match it, and then if necessary, multiply it. Now, least common multiple is the one that's a little bit different, and it's easy to get these confused when I'm working them to know which is which. Remember, first of all, that um, the names are backwards. So greatest common factor typically has a smaller number. Least common multiple will have a bigger number than you started. My steps are the same. I'm going to tree it. And again, I'm going to just do this here. 9 broken down is 3 times 3. 15 broken down is 3 times 5. 24 broken down, 2 and 12. 12 is 2 and 6. 6 is 2 and 3. So for greatest common factor, after you tree it and list it, you have to find the most of each number. So I have 3s, 2s, and 5s. I have 2 3s here. I have 1 3 here and 1 3 here. The most is 2. Okay, now I have no fives here, one five here, no fives here, so the most fives I have is one. No twos, no twos, three twos, so the most twos I have is three. And then my last step is going to be to multiply it. So I'm going to multiply three times three. I'm going to multiply five, and I'm going to multiply two times two times two. Now remember, in greatest common factor, whatever I circle pulls out as one. So if I have a pair of threes, it just pulls out as one. In least common multiple, you pull out everything that you've circled. And now my last step is to multiply this back together. I'm going to pull my calculator out real quick. Three times three times five times two times two times two gives me a total of 360, and that is my least common multiple. Tree it, list it, find the most and then multiply everything you've circled together. So these guys are pretty simple. We're given a math problem with variables and then we're given values for the variables. So all I have to do is plug in 3 for x, negative 2 for y, and it's easy to lose signs in here. So what I'm going to tell you to do is to use parentheses. Number one, you don't lose your operations as easily, and you certainly don't lose your science as easy. And now I use order of operations to solve. Two times three is six. Three times negative two is negative six. And six minus six is zero, and I'm left with negative three as my answer. And that's all there is to these guys. All right, remember, we have to start inside of our parentheses. Um, and if I can't do anything inside of our parentheses or my parentheses, I'm going to look outside. Now, I need to pay, a close, pay close attention because I can only add like terms, which means if they're exponents, uh, variables and exponents don't match. They're not like terms. So x squared is not the same as x, which means I can't simplify anything here or here. So I'm going to look outside. Nothing is here. Those parentheses are going to just go away. And technically what I have outside here is a positive 1, and 
what I'm actually supposed to do is multiply everything inside of here by a positive 1. But knowing my mathematical information, a positive 1 when I'm multiplying isn't going to change anything. So if there's a positive or a plus or nothing outside of your parentheses, those parentheses just to go away. So what I really have on here, I probably should have given myself more room, is just 6x squared plus 6x plus 4 plus 4x squared plus 3x plus 2. And now I just add like terms. 6x squared plus 4x squared is 10x squared, 6x plus 3x is 9x, and then 4 plus 2 is 6, and this big old thing is my answer. So let's look at this other one. Um, I can't simplify anything inside, so I'm going to look outside. Nothing, parentheses go away plus parentheses go away. So I have negative 3x squared plus x plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. Nothing is changing and now I'm simply going to add my like terms. Negative 3x squared plus 2x squared gives me negative 1x squared. x minus 3x is negative 2x. And then I have a 4 here. I don't have any other terms to add to it, so it's going to stay put. You do not have to write the 1. Technically, you probably shouldn't. It should just be negative x squared. But if it's easier to write the 1 so you don't lose your understood 1, that's fine. Here's a couple more, but the difference now is I have a negative. So right here, I'm going to look outside of this one. There's nothing there, so those parentheses are going to go away. However, outside of this set is a negative. Technically, it's a negative 1, and I need to multiply everything inside of here by negative 1. Instead of mentally working through all of that, here's what you need to remember. A negative outside of the parentheses is going to change every single sign inside those parentheses. So my first set, nothing happens to my first set because there's nothing in front of it. However, in my second set, every sign is going to change. So this negative becomes a plus. This plus becomes a minus. This minus becomes a plus. So remember, positive outside changes nothing. A negative outside changes all of the signs. And now we just add our like terms. 7x squared plus 3x squared is 10x squared. 2x minus 2x absolutely goes away. 2 minus 2 is 0. 0x zero is nothing, so I don't need to write it. Negative 3 plus 12 is 9. So this binomial becomes my answer. Now let's look at this last one. There's a negative out here. That means all of those signs have to change. There's a negative here, so all of those signs have to change. Now let me kind of clean that up. I can't even see my problem. Hold on. Okay. My positive 3x squared is going to become minus 3x squared, minus 24x, minus 7x squared, minus 3x, plus 9. Don't think of it as everything becoming negative. Think of it as signs changing because this negative becomes a positive. So think about it as the signs changing. Now I add my like terms. Negative 3x squared minus 7x gives me negative, or 7x squared, I'm sorry, gives me negative 10x squared. Negative 24, don't forget the sign in front of your term stays with your term. So negative 24 minus 3 gives me negative 27x. And here is my only number I've got there all by himself. And this big old ugly thing is my answer on this one. All right, now remember when we're multiplying. First of all, two things side by side with no sign means multiply. And we talked about this before. If we are multiplying like bases, we add the exponents. However, coefficients or the big numbers in front 
don't the rules don't change for those the rules only change for the exponents so when I have 2x times 5x squared I still multiply my coefficients 2 times 5 is 10 and that is really crooked but that's okay and then I add my exponents now don't forget there's an understood one right there so what I have is x1 and x2 so this gives me x3 1 plus 2 is 3 2x times 5x squared is 10x cubed. This one's a little bit longer. Multiply your number, 6 times 5 is 30. Now this is where you need to pay attention to because you need to find your matching. I have x3, I have x2. Because I'm multiplying, I'm going to add my exponents. And then this is still there by itself. I can't just eliminate it. I just have to bring it down and this becomes my answer. So whole number or coefficients are still whole numbers and treat them as such. Multiply whole numbers, add your exponents. So when we multiply, we add. When we divide, we subtract. But we still treat our coefficients, so the big numbers in front, the same. So in this case, we have, oh, don't forget the understood ones. There's an understood 1 in front as your coefficient, and then if it's not written there, there's an understood 1 as your exponent. So, let me clean this up a little bit. That's bother me. I'm going to do 9 divided by the understood 1. 9 divided by 1 is 9, and I'm going to subtract my exponents. 5 minus 3 is 2. So 9 x to the fifth power divided by x cubed gives me 9 x squared. And like we did with multiplication, we just need to sort of pay attention and match up the parts that match. So again, coefficients are just regular numbers. The rules don't change. 21 divided by 3 is 7. Now find your like bases. x5 divided by x2. We're going to subtract our exponent. 5 minus 2 is 3. Then y4 and y3. Divide means we subtract the exponents. 4 minus 3 is y1. I don't have to write that 1 there, and usually it won't be written there, but if you write it down, it's going to be fine. Hey guys, get on and do the homework for this lesson so we can get it checked and looked at before our test.